What's going on, everyone? Might go back doing my recap from the Philly show for fall 2021. Awesome that they're back on schedule. Obviously, due to the pandemic, we lost a few shows in 2020 and the beginning of 2021. They did have an added date in June, but this is a show that takes place three times a year, so great to be there. They do it three days. Uh, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday show. I was only available for Friday, which is kind of rough because it's the hours, the regular hours are 3 p.m. to 8 p.m., so you only have five hours to see a fairly large size show, so I had to bounce around as quickly as I can. Didn't make too many purchases, but had a great time regardless. I uh, got to run into and meet several people. Ran into my buddy Jeremy, who I actually bought a box of cards from a stack of cards so i'll show off some of the highlights from that ran into andrew nuff said cards great to talk to him a few times and his son jack and met a few others as well so it was a great time seeing everyone just looking at cards just walking around looking at stuff um thinking about stuff thinking about purchases but not kind of forcing the issue and making purchases for the sake of it so I'll show off some of the things that I picked up and then talk a little bit more about the show. So picked up some boxes of 2021 Bowman Chrome. They have been boosting up in price quite a bit. So I was able to get some at a pre pretty reasonable price. If you look now, they uh, just kind of keep bumping up. I think they're approaching like $300 a box. So we'll see how that hype goes. I know I've heard a lot of good things about the rookie or the prospect class from 2021 Bowman Chrome. Haven't decided if I'll break any yet or not. Um, it's one of those products that I don't really have a great time opening. Like I enjoy it, of course, enjoy opening anything, but there's just so much unknown. It's one of those products. It's almost more fun to open in a few years, but then you have to see how prices go. So for right now, just pick them up. Not in any rush either way. So we'll, uh, We'll see what the future holds with that. As far as single cards and such, my purchases, this is some of them. I have a bigger stack. I did get an autograph. I did purchase at the show this card, the 1952 Tops Bobby Shantz. Got it signed. Bobby Shantz, pretty common signature. Great uh, through-the-mail autograph guy, and he's always doing signings in the Philadelphia area. He's originally from Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Has lived in the Philadelphia area for the majority of his life, played with the Philadelphia Athletics, also the Yankees, the Cardinals, and the Phillies. He was 1952 American League MVP, and he inscribed that. So I just thought, you know, whenever you have a chance to meet him at a show, it's hard not to uh, hard not to do so. So card looks great. Definitely happy to pick that one up. The time of this recording on uh, Monday morning, it's actually his 96th birthday. So they sang happy birthday to him at the show. So it was great to be there for that as well. As far as pickups, so I bought a box of cards from a buddy of mine, Jeremy, who I used to work with. And uh, we met up, talked for a little bit, got a box of stuff, a lot of cool things, a lot of Nice stuff that will make great additions to the collection. Just thought I'd pick out some of the unique, the more unique and PC cards, show them off. We got a Vicente Padilla refractor. How many Vicente Padilla refractors are you going to see on YouTube? Padilla was uh, actually acquired from the Diamondbacks by the Phillies in the Kurt Schilling trade. And he was decent, as you can see, 2002, 2003, pretty good years, you know, solid pitcher. They got decent amount out of them uh it's just a cool card cool gold refractor the gold refractors back in the early 2000s were a little more common than they are now but just a nice kind of oddball for the phillies collection got a chase utley purple refractor i'm not a huge fan of purple refractors but i'll certainly always pick them up if they fit the collection also got the purple Bryce Harper from Bowman's Best, which I actually didn't break any Bowman's Best last year. Typically, I do. I uh, just didn't last year. Prices were high, and it just kind of blended in with everything else. Here's a 
Topps Heritage Red Refractor, Bryce Harper. So the Red Refractor is in Heritage, more common than most products, numbered the 372. But they certainly look great for Phillies collectors and obviously other teams that feature red color. But, I mean, that's awesome for the collection. Sweet Bryce Harper. He's a Roy Halladay Topps Finest Refractor. Obviously big Halladay collector. That's from 2004 Finest. 2015 Cole Hamels Blue Refractor. Those are numbered to 150. Another Finest Hamels Blue. That's numbered to 299. And that is from 2010 Finest. Sweet looking card. And then have some Finest Flashback Refractors. Kevin Kiermaier. This one, uh, I think I'll probably keep it in the collection. I just, uh, I like Kiermaier. He's a good player, great defensive player. Been a part of a lot of really good Tampa Bay Rays teams. We'll see what he does this year in the postseason with the Rays. How long he sticks around. I mean, offensively, he's kind of hit and miss. But he's a he's a good player. I mean, you look at the Rays lineup and you just it doesn't blow you away. But yet, year in, year out, they're in the playoff hunt. Last year, they're in the World Series. We'll see what they do this year. Adam Hazley needed this one for the collection for my finest flashbacks. Phillies refractor run. Black refractor. Black ones are numbered to 25. Now, Hazley, former first-round pick, showed some promise when he first came up. This year, he started the season. He played well in spring training, won the starting center field job, struggled out of the gate, as did Roman Quinn. The Phillies really had nothing early in the year, got nothing offensively out of their center fielders. And um, Hazley, like, took a break. I don't, it was really odd. It came out of nowhere. He left the team for a period of time, went on leave. Did eventually come back, but he spent the rest of the year in Triple A. So we'll see what kind of future he may or may not have in Philadelphia. But regardless, it was a card I needed for the collection. And then I got a few JT Real Muto refractors from Finest Flashbacks that I actually needed. So Real Muto oddly had two cards in 2020 Finest Flashbacks. He had an all-star card and a base card. Typically, players do not have two cards. I think it was just a random checklist oversight by Tops, but whatever, just more to collect. So these are two I didn't have. I didn't have the all-star version of Real Muto's gold refractor. And I did not have the base refractor from the all-star version. So two more to cross off the checklist, along with Hazley sets three. So really sweet pickups, Jeremy. Thanks for the deal. Got a box of cards from him for like 50 bucks. So those were some of the highlights. There's definitely some other cool stuff in there as well. But for time purposes, I figured I'd just show those ones off so overall i'd say it was a successful philly show it was a good time got to hang out with bobby Shantz a little bit pick up some cards talk to some friends in the hobby look at a lot of awesome stuff hang out with my dad he actually uh i wound up going with him to the show walked around looked at some stuff some observations uh, I know it was Friday, so it wasn't the bigger. Saturday's the bigger day this time of the year. Um, Sunday morning definitely has its crowd too, but things taper off as you get closer to the start of the All Star game or the NFL games. Um, maybe it's a little different now with the sports book upstairs. A lot of people can run up and then come back down and check out the show. I'm not sure. Saturday is definitely typically the biggest day and the busiest day. But uh, Friday was a little, it seemed a little slower. Now, there were certainly some guys who were doing very well. Um, a lot of the ultra-modern stuff, a lot of that stuff was moving, a lot of wax. But they definitely crammed in more tables. They added like a whole new space. I mean, they had to cram in another 50 tables into that place. And it showed, and it definitely takes more time to get around and look at stuff. A lot more corporate stuff there. You got a lot of, a lot of people traveling. I know Nash Cards is involved now, and they have some of the advertisement. And a few other places as well I remember seeing on their advertisement email. CSG was there. Got to say, CSG was dead. I don't know if things picked up as the weekend went on. Um, I know Ed said it was pretty uh, pretty light Saturday when he was there. I mean, it, there was no one there. I actually had a mislabeled card I had to drop off with them. And, I mean... 
two employees with nothing to do. So I was taken care of very quickly. While I was there for 20 minutes, maybe one person came up. So it was it was really slow. At the show, though, I saw a lot of CSG slabs. I don't know if they were moving or not. I saw a lot of SGC as well. So you're seeing a lot, a lot of diversification of slabs in showcases. You see a lot of SGC. You see a lot of CSG. You see a lot of PSA and, uh, you know, a fair number of Beckett's as well. Now, you always have seen SGC at the Philly show because there's a lot of tobacco and vintage. But of course, you see him more ultra modern. And I did see some SGC stuff moving, uh, as well as PSA slabs. But I didn't see a lot of CSG movement. But the utter lack of interest is definitely a bit concerning. Like I said, their slabs are amazing. Their flip needs work. I think them and HGA did a disservice going with the Beckett scale. I think that was a mistake. I think the PSA SGC scale is a little better and preferred by more. I do think people like subgrades. I think they hurt themselves by not just including subgrades uh, starting out. But they're still backed up. They're very backed up. So they're obviously doing well with people submitting stuff. We'll just see if the general audience... um, interest increases but it was uh it was surprising the overall lack of interest because i mean there were other play- people by them they're kind of in the corner with some others but like star stock was pretty crowded they were there as well so we'll see just some thoughts um the show had a decent crowd early but it definitely tapered off and that's to be expected on a Friday night. I mean, you have some people who kind of show up after work, look around a little bit. I don't think most people do like Friday and done. But I know like the last hour of the show, I was kind of surprised as well. Wow, it's it's definitely very calm in here. Definitely not the frenzy that it may or may not have been on Saturday. So anyway, just wanted to share some pickups, share some thoughts. Appreciate everyone watching. I'll be back soon with some more stuff, some mail days, some breaks. PSA reveal and SGC reveal. So stay tuned. Appreciate everyone who watches the channel, and I'll talk to you next time. Have a great one. Yeah, my son's behind. His friend introduced me. He shook my hand. I ain't just drove anymore. I'm 24 years young. Yeah. The gallery premiere of Jimmy Fiorentino's. One of the first times it's ever been That would be awesome. So if you have one of those VIP badges for James's artwork, you might want to head over there at this time. They're going to be doing on bailing, and the art gallery will be open over there in just a couple of minutes. Back to the cave.